of the things that Macri talked about, you know, development in some areas. How, how about Frank? Because it seems like, you know, whether it was him not being durable enough or him just not playing well enough, seems like Frank took a step back this year. It wasn't the sophomore campaign that any of us would have hoped in, in Frank Nielakina. Um, What's your take on, on that situation and how it plays out going forward? All right, I'll take it. Uh, um, so I, I'm probably the biggest Frank fan. Um, on here. I, I just, I, I love the kid's attitude. I love everything about him. And um, wh- even though I think you can look at each individual step and each individual move they made in terms of how it impacted him um, and defend it, it's impossible to look back at the season and say that what they did where he was concerned was the best approach. Um, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know what the better approach was. Um, and like, you know, we were having, we were going back and forth on this on uh, with actually with Dave early JB uh, yesterday on Twitter about like, listen, Frank was the worst um, shooter in the league this year mm. of, among guys who, you know, played significant minutes. And true. significant games. I mean, it's it's a fact. Um, how much does that go on him? How much does that go on them? Um, I I just I don't know if it's a fit with how with with what it just seems like what they're emphasizing with what it seems like what his mentality just naturally is. Um, you look at an organization um, like the Spurs and how they how they do things on the court, and it's just it's just so much easier to see Frank in that kind of system and and just thriving there. And I hope I'm wrong. Um, I really do. I hope I'm wrong. Um, but that's because I still believe in the kid, and I yeah. still think he's going to be a good player. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I, I want to see it work out as well, man. Jay Ellis, what about you, man? Yeah, you know me, CP. I got made fun of all, all year long for defending Frank on the. <laughs> on the post game live show. <laughs> and even when I was like, well, taking your approach and saying, well, Dan, the timing doesn't seem right for, for Frank to really thrive here now, considering where we're at. And this season, DSJ, Kadeem Mountain, Moutier, um, possibility of getting Kyrie, um, all these guards here is going to be the two guards who take up his minutes, the, uh, the small forward even. Like it, to me, it just seems like there's too, too many obstacles coming into next season for Frank to, you know, get a fit here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, I still believe in Frank uh, like you do, but at the same time, it's like, man, this might not be the best situation for him. Like, I, it really, I, you really have to do, like, a lot of algebra in your mind and shifting around to, like, all right. <laughs> what? Which is ironic because on paper, given what their goals are this summer, he's exactly what they need. A low usage player who defends and, and makes smart passes. On paper, he's exactly the type of player that they should be looking for to fill in the holes on the roster that they hope to have. And again, I, I just I can't shake the nagging feeling that it's yeah. I don't know. I, I hope the, I'm wrong. Not the a one fit. the one thing the one thing that would have kept them on the court was the shooting. Like if, well, yeah, obviously, yeah. If he, like if he was able to hit threes this season and do everything else he did, and that's all that happened, changes everything. It changes everything completely. And but that never happened. It seemed like glimpses of it was happening in the beginning of the season, and that tapered off. But um, even towards, but right before he got injured, he seemed like he was showing another dimension to his game. The injury happened. Yeah. And that was that's all she wrote. She, she he played like forty two games. He played half a season. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, yep. he, just, he literally just played half season. So it's sometimes it's timing and luck. Sometimes, man, that that's that's part of the game too, man. Like if Frank was healthy in that portion of the game when Moody was hurt, we didn't have to bring up Kadeem Allen to take his place. Then who knows what would happen? But he never got the opportunity because of that annoying grind injury. So yeah, the, yeah, yeah, injury was the worst possible time. And I mean, I just think that. You know, we know obviously that Frank was picked when what was it, ten days before Phil Jackson was Five, gone, and, yeah, right. And it was the idea that he is kind of the perfect uh, maybe triangle point guard, etc. And we haven't known how invested the guy, you know, Mills being left over, and then now Perry are in him. But I, I just think if they do get the free agents that they think they're going to get, it really just changes the timeline, right? Yeah. So yeah. even if 
all agree that Frank over time can become a valuable player. I mean, you know, you got to be a little honest and say to yourself, okay, we just had a, a season where we essentially were just playing anyone who was young. We weren't expected to win any games and he still, he couldn't make an impact in that environment. Mm -hmm. Usually, you know, the whole concept of empty stats is you're playing guys who normally on a good team might not get that same opportunity. So therefore they're able to kind of inflate their numbers a little bit. Well, Frank wasn't able to do that at all this season, right? So I guess the question is, are they going to look at it that way and say, so how do we expect him now to contribute on this winning team where we need a guy to actually hit down, hit an open shot because that might be a shot in the playoffs or, uh, you know, versus having the patience to develop him up. And I just think it changes the timeline if they get those players. And then, you know, there's also some cap implications that if you were to trade them. But I think the negative to me is, you know, they didn't, his value is depressed now. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, if you could argue this year, I guess going a little bit at, uh, versus what I just said, this was the year to play him at point guard all the way through, That's not just kind of experiment with him on other positions. Right. So why not? You know, if you had built up his value, then now if you made that same calculation, well, we like him, but we want more win now, guys. You at least have value to trade. Where it seems like now you're really trading him on a low. And to me, that was kind of the negative. Is I would have liked to see them turn some of these guys, whether it was Bonley at the trade deadline, um, obviously, like we just said with Frank, even Hazonia, like before the season started, you know, who knew what he would be or not? And obviously, he had a good last couple games. It would have been nice to see them turn any of those reclamation slash young players into higher value trade pieces. Yeah. And I'm not so sure they did that, maybe with the exception of Moutier, but because of Moutier's contract situation, it's really tough to do much with him. Um, that, to me, was probably the biggest negative or disappointment. 